Have you ever thought about how scientists come up with answers to the questions we may have? The very questions you think about when you try to sleep while lying in bed? You wonder how it is possible to answer these questions while they appear to be impossible in our brains. In reality, the strategy for answering these type of questions is based on a seven-step process known as a scientific method. You might wonder, what exactly is the scientific method? The scientific method is a way through which people may answer problems by conducting experiments and making observations to gather data. It involves a seven-step process that allows someone to simply deconstruct the intricacy of science. This video will teach you the seven-step process and its importance. It is crucial to remember that the procedures of the scientific method can differ. You may note that there are occasionally six steps instead of the seven. I will describe the seven steps to you first and then proceed a little further to discuss each step's purpose and significance. The first step in the scientific method process is to think of a question or a problem that needs to be addressed. The second step is to conduct background research in order to gather information and gain an understanding of the topic's existing knowledge. Following that, you should develop your hypothesis, which is your educated guess with regard to your question. Once you have a hypothesis, you will need to test it through an experiment. The fifth step is to make observations based off your experiment, and following that, you will analyze the information collected and draw conclusions based on the results. Finally, you will share your discoveries with others. Now it's time to break it up a little further, starting off with the first step, thinking of a problem. You need to ask yourself, what do you want to solve? Whether it's something as simple as why your bread molds over time, or complex problems like why the ice caps are melting at a faster rate. This may be the most simple or difficult part for certain people. This step's significance is that it sets the foundation for the entire research process and acts as a guiding point. Now that you have a question in your mind, you want to start doing research. This step of the scientific method will allow you to go further into the knowledge that is currently available regarding the subject you are investigating and wishing to experiment. This is significant because it allows you to build on previous information while discovering gaps in your present understanding. Okay, so now that you have a question and have done some research on it, you want to formulate your hypothesis, which is an educated guess. The goal of your experiment is to either refute or confirm your educated guess. Therefore, acts as a starting point for your investigation. This is important because it allows you to narrow down your experiment in a clear-cut way and will serve as an indicator of whether your experiment was successful or not. The fourth step, the actual experiment, is now where you can really carry out your study. Here, you would actually put all the information you had collected together, do an experiment to see whether you can support or disprove your hypothesis. This is where the fun begins, since you can actually get your hands dirty, depending on the experiment, obviously. In order to guarantee that all your data is accurate at this stage, it is crucial to adhere to the methods and protocols that you have described in your experimental design. Due to the significance of conducting the experiment in a way that allows for the most precise findings while also accurately recording data, this is an essential step in the scientific method. However, this is also the point at which it might become the most time, money, or effort intensive. Now that the experiment is up and going, you must make observations while it is being carried out. By doing this, you'll be able to collect all the information you need to make conclusions later. The observations act as a starting point for analyzing and interpreting the data, allowing researchers to come up with relevant conclusions and take appropriate action in light of the findings. This, depending on the sort of experiment you are running, your observations might be qualitative or quantitative. Since you've gathered all your data, it's time to put on your thinking cap and begin analyzing it. This may be the most time-consuming step in the scientific method because it involves carefully reviewing and organizing the data that was gathered. This is due to the large amount of data you will have to examine. Finding patterns, trends, and links within the gathered data is the process of data analysis, basically. In this step, conclusions from the data are also drawn. This is when you put two and two together and figure out whether you can prove or refute your hypothesis. Some people might think this is the last step because you have drawn your conclusions. However, it's not, which takes us to our final step of the scientific method. The final step of the scientific method process is to communicate your findings. This is so important because you spend all this time and effort in order to conduct an experiment, gather data, analyze it, draw conclusions. And so now you want to inform others about your findings. This can be done during conferences, in a journal, or even just telling a friend or two about it. 
Regardless of how you communicate your findings, the important thing is that you do so, so that you contribute your research to the topic you studied. And there you have it, the sweet seven step scientific method, a method you can use the next time you want to investigate why your bed has mold or why the polar caps are melting more rapidly. Whatever you decide to investigate, keep in mind that science is all about innovation and discovery. So go out there, ask questions, conduct experiments, and let your mind wander.